so vietnam conference part is closed so you have completed your part so this india chapter completed only one and nepal will start day after tomorrow uh -huh. so vietnam is now taking the flight <laughs> <laughs> yeah congratulations ki ha <laughs> for, success, for successful completion of the program okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah so india Tomorrow and bangladesh a working day uh yes. yeah so, so india one event today, today so tomorrow and day after tomorrow all the three days are busy yeah <laughs> india is the biggest country yeah <laughs> and bomanji will say they always go for <laughs> large large <laughs> oh, plus also in terms of the age also need to think for the age. okay so uh, our honorable session chair kobish sir joined with us so uh, good evening sir uh, hello good evening how are you good evening good evening good evening uh, fine sir so uh maybe it, uh we can wait one or two minutes so for natalie okay. so she's from us so let's see what is her status i'm just requesting her okay shevali madam oi oi meeting oi meeting over hoye gachi it's a different we need to remove the participants of the previous meeting okay so uh kavir sir may i start now yes you can okay okay thank sure. you sir and uh we can start and our participant will join one by one uh so good evening uh everybody so uh today is the first day of our uh, global summit on education and you know that this is our third edition and uh this time we are hosting the conference virtually and uh today is our thematic presentation uh which is the uh redefining education with innovation and resilience so we have uh, our session chair honorable uh, kabir sir so uh, mohammad kabir hasan associate professor and attached officer atui bangladesh and we have uh, five panel uh, panelists here so dr shabboshachi mojumdar post graduate teacher kendriya vidyalaya sangathan national teacher of india and uh, mr majumdar is ilp fellow uh, usa and international teacher exchange fellow and japan and also country coordinator of gist international foundation india we have a speaker uh, from ukraine ms olga shokrabachenko so she is esl teacher and t fellow 2014 and mr bamon ji here Mr Bamon has been serving as a high school english teacher in nepal for about two decades popularly known for spreading out online learning culture in high schools in nepal his innovative teaching practices and educational leadership are recognized by the british council us government and australian government he has set strong ties with schools in bangladesh be it in taking teachers into the school communities or at leading nepali student in some collaborative learning ever since the estimation of gist he has been working as its country chief for nepal not only limited to connecting school from nepal but other parts of the globe too to bangladeshi flavor and enthusiasm for learning 
And we have another speaker, Ms. Ha from Vietnam. Ms. Ha, during her 19 years of experience as a lecturer at Faculty of English Language Teaching Education, University of Language and International Studies, Vietnam National University. 14 years as a speaking examiner of Cambridge English since 27. Cambridge English six years as a Microsoft Innovative Educator, two years as an international consultant of GIST International Foundation. Ms. Ha is passionate about using technology to enable innovative learning experience and bringing increased creativity to teaching and learning. And we have another speaker from US, Ms. Natalie Lochin. So she is the English language teacher at New Hampshire Public School USA. And she teaches students from grade uh, one to grade 12. So now we know that uh, actually GIST is working uh, globally uh, to maintain the network with the teacher community to uh, develop their capacity building so that they can learn from each other and can uh, implement the best practices in their own school. And we know that ensuring quality education for all is the goal number four. But this COVID crisis actually changed the overall scenario. At this moment, we can see that different countries are different, uh, taking different initiative to address these issues. And thus we are uh, hosting this session where we came to know the different approaches uh, that different countries are taking to address the issues to achieve sustainable development goal number four. And now uh, I'd uh, like to uh, ask Mr. Bamon from Nepal to share a few words, how Nepal is coping with this issue and how uh, are you thinking of redefining education with innovation and resolution in current context? Mr. Bamon. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Biplav. And, um... It's a pleasure to share a common platform with uh, the teachers, leaders. I call not the teacher leaders, but the educational leaders from across the globe. Uh, though uh, it's not an uncommon field uh, where I happen to be sharing the uh, space with them, I still feel much privileged to be here with uh, someone from the Ministry of Education from uh, Bangladesh itself. And of course, uh, it's not just Nepal, but I, I do believe that uh, the countries, mostly from the global south, they have much to learn from what the Bangladesh youth. Actually, I, I indeed, I'd like to specify the Bangladeshi youth uh, have been doing to give a better shape to the country and also set themselves as an example in the global south. So this afternoon, one of my friends was talking about the data from uh, the World, uh, World Economic Forum. And uh, even in my classes, I display some images and some facts and figures that the uh, World Economic Forum has been coming up about how Bangladesh is lifting itself as one of the fastest growing nations. has been making is setting an example to even my, the strengths uh, from my country too. So um, in on my part, since 2015, I have been closely working with uh, the schools in um, Dhaka, particularly through the connection of Diplop. And uh, it was in 2015 and 16, I led a group of teachers as well as the students for two uh, great nature carnivals in Notre Dame College. And also in 2018, I was fortunate to lead uh, a group of teachers uh, from, um, I mean, university professors and teachers to Bangladesh. And this is how what I'm, uh, I'm doing is, I am interconnecting the academia in Nepal with the academia from beyond the borders. Because now, Internet access has been reaching wider number of people, but 
a big number of the learners are left behind in the magics behind internet and if we do not uh, correct their path if we do not uh, just channelize the intellect and the resources that they have got at this moment then who is next so in that sense we teachers must play uh, must play some significant roles in redefining i mean redefining the career of the students so we should no longer be going for the conventional careers or conventional jobs that our ancestors our forefathers used to be entitling us with so for this reason i'm not a talented one indeed i know just the threads of a world learning so what i have for that purpose i'm trying to connect myself with the educational leaders from the other parts of the globe and learning the lessons from them and at the meantime i'm trying to connect my students with their students this is how because i do believe that in 10 years time down now i mean from now my students can make very good entrepreneurship part entrepreneur partners with the students from ukraine or with the students from vietnam or with the students from bangladesh who knows the friends they met during such international conferences or the discussions now can be going to uh, give them a better path in near future we can they can establish some uh, stronger relationship stronger ties for some other uh, initiations that they take in future so with that vision in mind i'm trying to connect my strengths with others and of course this sort of gathering so gist has been playing a pivotal role for bringing those people together so even today like the uh, forum that i mean the conference that we have been running here has got the participants from over 40 countries and my students have been like last time when they participated in ioewl they were talking about how brilliant the speakers from bangladesh were ukrainians so we always think that ukraine is close to russia so they may not be really good in english and this afternoon one of my students was saying sir i never thought that ukrainian students could be so smart in english they were not worse than i mean not less than the americans or the british no? now my students would definitely start preparing in smarter ways because they have now realized how the world has been taking a leap frog in learning like you don't need to just think of the teachers now now you can have global teachers in the internet world itself so uh, realizing this fact even on my case like my intro uh, uh, introduction to biplob in 2014's exchange program in usa has brought me to such a wide network now i want my strengths uh, cash that opportunity in 10 years time from now my students will be thinking back of me and thinking back of the gist initiations that had uh, taken them across the borders and made them a global competitor so with that reason uh, i'm thinking uh, i'm i'm working out to catch the uh, the human resources that we have got in connection as well as the physical resources that we have at reach and of course so in this connection, why I'm working with, there may also be coming up the question, why are you so gradually working with Bangladesh then? Why not other countries? Like you can be working with any European or American too, but there are some reasons why I feel one with the academia in Bangladesh. One is our challenges are somehow similar, somehow similar. And even our opportunities are not much different indeed. So, so far as our eco socio-economical structure is concerned, we are somehow in the same level indeed. So, and of course, the, uh, what I have noticed is the population has given rise to the pollution in, in Bangladesh. And uh, I was told by my friends that, okay, when you go to Dhaka, you don't need to uh, just take any, kind, any, uh, any vehicle, just stand up to the direction you are going to, you'll be pushed and sent to that particular place, no? 
and I felt the same. But I got what I was so much overwhelmed by was the kind of hospitality the people have, no matter whether you are uh, rich or poor, no matter whether you're educated or uneducated. Like I often saw the people giving a due respect to me. Once I was lost in a, in a bazaar there, and one very old man, he guided me to a shop and to thus helped me get connected with my friends. See, this is the magical tie now. That's the magical tie which makes me close to the people. We are not just giving them the knowledge from the textbook. We don't want them just to score high, but want them learn from the society. Like civic responsibility is what I was much impressed by, and the hospitality is uh, highly, highly appreciating. Last point, it's the nature and the innovation in educational technology that the youth in Bangladesh have been very crazily and in a, in a, in a, in a highly worthy manner. They are walking in a highly appreciable manner. And that's what the countries in the global south need to learn lots from. So that's it from my part. Back to you, Biplav. Thank you very much. OK, thank you. So I'll come back to you later. So uh, now uh, I can see that due to COVID crisis, many countries have closed their face-to-face -face teaching. But uh, from Misha, I came to know that Vietnam is running some classes there. And they are still active in their face-to-face -face sessions. So Misha, could you please share uh, your point of view, how Vietnam is dealing with this issue and uh, thinking of dealing with COVID crisis? Hey, thank you, Mr. Biblov. Uh, during coronavirus crisis, we as uh, uh, citizens of Vietnam, we do appreciate every single step that the government protects us. And uh, Vietnamese patients are all treated free of charge. And uh, also we welcome Vietnamese overseas to deciding to come back to Vietnam to be better protected during COVID-19. And uh, with, uh, with education, we have many apps accessible to show uh, the places and also to help uh, students and teachers. Uh, to notify the NCOV patients and also to support us uh, in the teachings and learning. And um, for before, before February the 10th in 2020, most educational organizations, uh, university, schools, and even with the kindergarten launched online programs within the key subjects and uh, since March the 10th in 2020, uh, all the subjects are tossed uh, online in most schools and universities. And online educational approach is not easy at all for all schools in different areas, as well as, um, uh, as, well as um, in, uh, yeah, e even, even in the city or in the remote area, it depends much on their infrastructures. And in Vietnam, there have been many online training courses available sessions uh, on sharing and learning about digital tools in online classroom. And most strikingly, Microsoft Vietnam and uh, Vietnam Post and uh, telecommunications cooperate to support teachers with free Office 365 online accounts and with a good wide broadband to have activate online activities in all educational organizations. Uh, parents and students at first were all hesitant as it took a lot of time assisting the children to digest online class hours. And um, of course, we get used to working and teaching and even learning online, even though it is now temporary called normal normalization. But different approaches have been applied in different levels from kindergarten to postgraduate programs. They include e-learning campaigns, uh, integrated learning, 
integrated learning here, it means that online together with offline classes, uh, especially in the higher education, we combine both online and offline. And with some, uh, with some uh, schools, I mean the high school and also the secondary school in cities like Hanoi. Actually, uh, now uh, in the normalized uh, normalization stage, we uh, the we often have the online uh, process uh, at least uh, once once a week, and uh, just for some secondary school, uh, besides studying offline at school, they often assign students with some online tests at home, and with the with a fixed time and a fixed date. The, so the children and uh, children will go, will go online to do the tests within the limitation of time. And I think that it is a very good combination to get used to online and offline together. Also with, uh, uh, with the teachers and lecturers themselves, uh, we, we, we self-educate and self-learned by uh, creating different online classes and organize uh, different online sessions and also uh, many YouTube channels. Yeah, uh, you, many individual, individual YouTube channels uh, have been created. And um, especially with the Ministry of Education, uh, they uh, they support uh, teachers and uh, uh, and uh, students of all levels. Just like in higher education, we have the e-learning program, so that we, we have been trying our best to digitalize uh, all the subjects uh, to put them online. Especially just like in my university, University of uh, uh, Inter of uh, Languages and International Studies. Um, our, our, dean, uh, our dean set a deadline of within one year, we have to digitalize all the courses and all the programs. And uh, if, 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 if any subjects or any program uh, that, uh, that, that hasn't been digitalized, so um, it tends to be deleted in the course at the university. So I mean that uh, it seems to be a tough measure now. And uh, with, the, um, with the help from the Ministry of Education for secondary school, uh, we have been built uh, so many projects, just like uh, cyber schools, okay? So it means that in, of different levels from uh, primary to higher education, we have different plans and uh, projects uh, and uh, they are done uh, by individually or by the teams or by the, the school, or even with the help of the Ministry, Ministry of Education. So I think that it is a very good, uh, good way to prepare for any unexpected issues. Okay, thank you. So I'll come back to you again. And uh, now we know that uh, India and Bangladesh has very uh, similar culture and almost same infrastructure. And before COVID crisis, the kind of education uh, that we delivered and the kind of assessment process were different. And now how India is coping with this issue, especially at Kolkata. Mr. Shobhashachi is here from Kolkata. So could you please share about the education approaches or how you are redefining education now? Good, afternoon. Good evening to all of my friends here and a special uh, good evening for these and uh, the ministry uh, official present here, Kadir sir. Uh, as a, Bamanji has rightly told that the condition, and as Biplop is telling that there are similar situations in the subcontinent in terms of educational setup, in terms of the huge, in terms of huge number of people beyond poverty line, in terms of uh, digital divide all, and affluence, everything was there prior to pandemic. But the main point was that we are 
offline and offline situation tackles many of the problem to a certain extent to a, with a greater vigor but all in a sudden this pandemic which we are not at all apprehending beforehand even we have a great program till december in in the, the second global summit without any any hindrance but at that time already it has started in china we couldn't even apprehend what would be in another one or two months the scenario has totally changes and initially we we the teachers in india mostly we are caught lacking that means majority of us were not very digital friendly and as a result we are facing what platform should we use what will be the impact how will we go from one part one to part to another these are all big questions and we are under confident that was the main point unconfident that was human being with its highest cerebral hemisphere capacity has the highest resilience so naturally the role of collaboration and partnership what i know i share with my friends what he knows or she knows he share with me in this way gradually gradually we have picked up to a condition where now we can say at least that teaching learning can be possible in a digital mode and even several teachers even for me i am in favor of a uh, blended learning approach even after the pandemics we are missing the we are missing the social part the warmth of the child the body language of the child we have problems with the the online examination system we have problem of one parent having three four siblings offsprings with a single digital phone we have parents without a phone yet we have loved the di this digital mode simply because this has dissolved the boundary and we have now in a trans boundary interaction possible made it possible and moreover this particular situation has bring forth that through digital mode we can we can approach to so many resources which is beyond the capability or possibility when we are teaching in an offline class in a, in a in a traditional setup so why to go back there so the need of the hour after the pandemic is over is obviously a blended learning mode where we will meet the students twice or thrice or 50% time and on the other 50% days we must rely upon this online teaching where we can utilize very many learning resources at the click of the mouse so that's why and we know that i have been astonished to find that there are so many initiative from the bangladesh side i am in closely in touch with this rongpur this rongpur public schools or their online classes i have seen sanad sir i have seen jaki sir i have seen khurshid jawan ji all are doing great work and that is possible with online situation government is of course supporting you need to have local cable channels there lies the innovations how we can innovate to spread the thing bhavan ji has told how we can innovate to spread the thing to the grassroots level 
how we can reduce the digital divide, how the affluent partner and the corporates can play their vital role as corporate social responsibility, and how the teacher can develop itself as a digital teacher, as a mentor, as a guide, as a facilitator to tackle this situation and go on beyond this in the coming era will definitely be a challenge to all teachers community, all the member of the teachers community. And those who knows the digital learning very well, they have greater role to play in the society to teach others and help us with yeah. I have, I'm an optimist. I have firm belief that we'll be definitely with come in contact with the teacher, uh, students and others very soon and we can have a blended learning mode in future. Thanks, all, thanks a lot and thanks to Bangladesh government for their great initiative in district-wise online classes. Thanks, thanks all. Back to thank you. Now. Thank you, Shabbat Shachida for sharing. So we uh, get some point there uh, that can be uh, shared with our educators here so that they can plan accordingly. So now uh, I want to move in different context there. So Ms. Olga is here from Ukraine. So uh, Nepal, India, Bangladesh is uh, almost similar infrastructure and similar type of challenge. So uh, we want to know your challenge and your approaches there and what kind of uh, problems you're facing and how you're dealing uh, that issues and continuing your education system there. Ms. Olga. Uh, thank you for giving me uh, the floor, Biplop. Uh, so you see I'm from a different part of the world. It's Christmas here. You can see my Christmas decorations. It's the time of celebration. And today the celebration is unique because of the educational event we have today. What about Ukraine? Of course, we follow the United Nations Organization uh, sustainable Deve development goals. And it's very important. The goal number four is quality education. It is issue number one in many, in all countries of the world. Uh, we have the same challenges as you. Uh, we are lack of uh, practice, use online learning. And we have been on lockdown since March so uh, almost a year, our children didn't go to school at all. Uh, since uh, this new school year, only primary uh, school children go to school. Higher, uh, the secondary and the high uh, school students uh, continue distant learning. What, it, uh, what can be said about this I would like not to say the problem, but the challenge, because challenge number one is for educators. At the very beginning of, of pandemic, Ukrainian teachers did one job twice because we had to present materials like paper materials and deliver somehow to our students. And we tried to use it online. So lots of new unknown work and lots of programs to discover. Uh, we, uh, uh, we use uh, quite uh, well Zoom, uh, Google, and um, learning apps. Uh, and we always keep in mind that uh, education, they remember the Bloom's taxonomy, the highest level of education is creation of something. So we had to create something new and we go the way like Vietnam. We, uh, up to the next year, we have to digitalize all our courses. We have to make up videos, video lessons for our uh, students. And um, I would uh, also agree with uh, uh, Sabur Sachi. So uh, you said very right scene. Uh, not only children and educators, parents are, no, are also not prepared for this challenge because they uh, uh, can't sometimes help their children at university or high school level. 
So they have uh, to do some educational work as well. And uh, it is a global, a global question. And uh, I see the result of our efforts is to create a leaders, uh, uh, leadership movement like JAST because it is the platform to support each other and to share experiences. Uh, of course, we have to understand that we will never be uh, the same as two or three years. It will never happen again, and we have to be prepared for uh, challenges in future. Since uh, uh, we have to move forward, next year is bringing new challenges. Uh, uh, in January, uh, our country will be again uh, absolutely locked on lockdown again for one month is due to some new uh, problems with uh, coronavirus. Uh, so uh, the teacher should be not only a person who educates, uh, he or she must be a leader to show and to support the students during this period. What, uh, uh, what is more uh, important, uh, thanks to collaborative work, and when our students see students from different countries and they work together, I believe we are getting better results because our students see that they are not locked in their houses. They see the wider world, uh, like uh, in the Olympiad, which was uh, two weeks ago, uh, like our seminars today, uh, we show the broad world for our students and it's extremely important to support their motivation their communication skills and of course strategic thinking skills because we don't have to think locally we have to think globally and i think we are going the right way thank you thank you Thank you so for your sharing and I'll uh, come back to you again. And uh, now uh, it's time from Natalie from US. So uh, we know that uh, in US uh, initial stage educational institution was uh, closed because of COVID cases. So now how uh, are you dealing with that issue? So still now uh, are you uh, supporting online education or you can, uh, come back to the face-to-face -face session? What's the scenario there? Hi, good evening or good morning here in New Hampshire. Um, thank you so much for um, welcoming to be, me to be here. So here in the United States, um, it varies across the country. Different schools are doing different things. Even within my own state, every town has its own choice on how they want to approach um, learning during the pandemic. So current, so when in March, my school closed where I taught, all of the schools in my district closed and we switched to virtual teaching. Um, within a week, we were switched to Google Classroom. All of the schools went to Google Classroom and it was an immediate switch. Um, but after the summer, we did some rethinking and my superintendent, he's the leader of our schools. He made it, he made it a choice for parents if they wanted to send their school students back to school in person with a lot of protocol measures to prevent the spread of the virus. So the desks are six feet apart. All students wear masks. Um, students, uh, teachers wear masks. And then the, the other option of in, besides in-person learning was also remote learning. So students had a choice and families had a choice. If they felt comfortable, they could send their students to school in person. And also he gave teachers a choice, which was pretty uncommon within our country, uh, even the, own, the town that I live in, I live in a different town. Teachers were not always given a choice. You have to have a medical reason if you could not come in to teach. But our superintendent decided to give parents a, a choice and teachers a choice. And it actually worked out almost perfectly that half, three quarters of the students wanted to come in person and three quarters of the teachers wanted to come in person as well. Um, so that is the current uh, mode that we're in. About most of the students are in person and one quarter are remote. Um, and however, after the Christmas vacation, our entire district is all remote to give families a time to quarantine to make sure that they're not bringing the virus back to school. So that is the current situation. I'm currently, because I teach grades kindergarten, which is the primary grade 
our five-year-olds all the way through 12th grade. I teach students in different schools, four different schools and on different grade levels. Um, they do not want me teaching all of my students because I will be, could potentially be a super spreader by teaching students in different pods because they kind of try to keep students in small pods of eight to 15 students so they're not exposed to many teachers or students. Because I will work across different pods, they prefer that I teach remotely. So even if some of my students are in school, they will set up a laptop outside of the classroom for me to Zoom with my students um, during their time for English language instruction. So I, I, um, I only teach the students who have recently moved to America from other countries. So English is their second language. So I just have a handful of students at each grade level because the town that I live in doesn't have quite as many immigrants as other towns. So that's um, the current situation in the town where I work in, but my, the town where I live in, it's very different with my own, my own children. I have a son who's 11 and my daughter's nine. Our town is doing hybrid model. So my own kids, they go to school um, half the time. So 50%, so my students, my kids are in the first half of the alphabet. So A through K, last name. They go to school on Monday and Tuesday and every other Friday, they alternate. And then Wednesday and Thursday, excuse me, um, so my, my kids go to school Monday and Wednesday and every other Friday. And other students are Tuesday, Thursday, every other Friday. So that way they're only school, in school two to three days a week. And that is how they're doing the, um, the hybrid model in my own town where I live in. Um, on a separate note, the high school where I teach at is a different model. They are doing a different type of hybrid model where if a teacher is teaching in person, specifically for a specific course, such as biological science, and they're the only teacher who teaches biological science, and a student has elected to attend school remotely, they are Zooming in to the class um, while the teacher also has a Zoom open, while he also has teach students in front of him. That has been a very complex and difficult model that has been difficult and the students who are zooming into the class have found it very difficult to feel connected to these other students. So, and that's been quite a challenge for them to negotiate that, but that has been the only solution at this point because they want to give students and teachers a choice. So we, although, you know, we have, you know, we have the capability, most students have internet and every school's internet. There's still some challenges that we still face with different types of hybrid models. Okay, thank you. So uh, now I want to know from each of you that uh, which innovative ideas you think that will be resilient after this COVID. So we have, uh, we came to know that there are many ideas there. And what idea do you think that will continue after this COVID? Anyone can pick first. Okay, Baman, would you like to answer this one? So uh, Nepal has taken uh, many initiatives. So which initiative do you think that will sustain? Hey, um, uh, thank you very much, Bipla. Um, I was noting it down, your, noting your down. Um, so in Nepal's context, uh, uh, we have somehow been uh, following up what Natali uh, has said. Uh, uh, in case of the rural areas where the COVID-19 cases are uh, pretty rare, the classes are going in physical mode. The government has given the directive to the local go uh, local governments and central government has given the directive to the local government to uh, let the school be reopened. And even the uh, uh, academic, uh, I mean, the Edu Ministry of Education now has been uh, supporting the school for that cause. And, uh, but in case of the urban areas, the guardians are pretty scared uh, to send the school, students to school. Even in my, in my case, like we ran the uh, parents meeting uh, for about a, a week now on different levels. And uh, the parents were saying that, oh, okay, online classes are doing well. So you don't need to call my kids to school. Like I, don't, I can't be, and I don't like it indeed now. And, so uh, what we have been doing is the way we have been until and unless this uh, COVID uh, uh, 
uh, keeps um, terrifying us. So I do believe that uh, the practices that we have been doing, we have been running the classes online. And at the meantime, every week we call the guardians to come with the worksheets. Okay. They drop the worksheets that they have, uh, the kids have completed and they go away with the new worksheet now. And they are very happy with it. The students are doing the assignments and taking the classes online. Uh, so uh, the winter season is gripping the, uh, gripping every home. So this kind of, I mean, uh, what I, uh, I call the blended learning or hybrid learning, whatever we name now, is working pretty well. And of course, so far as the uh, days ahead is concerned, I'm pretty sure like I, I find a silver lining in the education sector. That's because now the guardians have been much aware about the drawbacks of the technology. They were not uh, really conscious about how dangerous the devices can be. Now they have seen their kids locking their doors and even if there are no classes, they are pretty busy in different stops and they have been complaining on it. And of course, after it ends, they will be following up the students, one thing. And next is the teachers can also be running the classes the other way around. Now, when uh, the face-to-face -face goes, goes boring, you know, they can be bringing some uh, different tools and helping the students to work with others. Now. And the schools have got the computer labs and others. In Nepal's context, the government <laughs> has set up 1,000 uh, sample schools now, and it has funded those schools. And those I mean, government schools are getting uh, the, uh, I mean, they are getting stronger in terms of the infrastructures and private schools are obviously competitively enriching themselves with educational technology. So this way, I definitely feel that with the wide growth of the accessibility and the adaptability, as well as the, uh, the increase in the knowledge level to ICT, the students are going to benefit a lot. And for that cause, so far as resilience is concerned, we need to be hopeful, okay? We need to be living with hope that this COVID is going to be a blessing in disguise. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So uh, we know that in Bangladesh, uh, uh, although the similar structure uh, like uh, Nepal and India, so our government has taken so many initiatives and uh, to engage teacher to empower them towards uh, technology learning. And I think that uh, Kovisar is here so he can uh, give the valuable input there to let you know what kind of different approaches that our uh, country has taken to engage our teacher and to serve our students uh, to continue their uh, education. So at this moment, I'd like to request Honorable Kovisar, so please share your thoughts. Uh, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, really, it is a fantastic session, I think. Uh, it is, uh, I, uh, first of all, I would like to a uh, big hands to the organizer for uh, giving me the opportunity to say something here or share uh, something here. Distinguished guests, honorable speakers, and dear participants from home and abroad. Uh, I feel honored to join here. From my side, today's session, uh, redefining education with innovation and resilience is very important because uh, we are getting to meet the next normal situation. Uh, we are getting to meet the fourth industrial revolution. So from my side, it is uh, today's session and discussion is very important for me. Uh, yes we need to rethink and uh, redefine uh, our education because uh, teachers has uh, multiple roles in supporting home-based distance learning during the pandemic and uh, post-pandemic. Uh, I'd like to emphasize on uh, another thing that is a shifting of responsibilities of a teachers. Because uh, we never goes to the PBS teaching learning system. So our, uh, um, our uh, role must be shifting to the uh, teaching to learning. And I think uh, we should have followed the uh, blended, uh, blended teaching approach. 
in the near future. Uh, I believe uh, today's session, um, redefining education with innovation and resilience, uh, can be the uh, food for thought and uh, also the uh, eye opening uh, in the age of uh, pandemic and post pandemic, also. I'm sure uh, today's discussion and ideas uh, help to uh, our uh, secondary teacher uh, to rethink and replanning how to guide the learner. Uh, because, uh, you know, the uh, teacher's guide is very important. Um, very important, uh, you know, the PISA, uh, Program for International Student Assessment. Uh, PISA shows uh, that learner is happy in their working age or uh, doing better. Those who has gotten the proper guidance by their teacher. So teacher's guide is very important. So a pandemic uh, is uh, remind this always. Uh, from this pandemic journey, um, and my realization is uh, we have to go uh, personalized learning, uh, problem-based learning, uh, blended learning or hybrid learning model. Among, and uh, teacher's role must be shifted from teaching to learning. It is very important. Uh, now I would like to uh, uh, notice some significant issues from our honorable speakers. Uh, Mr. Bamon uh, from Nepal uh, shows some important uh, points, uh, both Nepal and Bangladesh. That is amazing, I think. Uh, you also uh, enjoy. And our friend from Vietnam told how Vietnam cope up with the situation uh, by the following online and offline programs with the help of Ministry of Education. Uh, it is also um, uh, learning for me. Uh, Olga from Ukraine says the challenges of distance learning. It is interesting uh, because he, uh, she says, uh, according to Bloom taxonomy, how it is challenging. So it is another uh, important thing uh, for me. I am um, learned so many things from this session. Uh, our another friend from India, Dr. Shubhoshachi, has given emphasis on collaborative learning and partnership. Thank you, friend. Uh, you said uh, important uh, two things. And also, you emphasize on a blended approach in teaching. Uh, well, we design, redesigned our curriculum by following the uh, blended learning or uh, competency-based uh, learning. So we hope in near future, we'll go the blended approach. Uh, Natalie from uh, USA uh, says some important edu tools that is very important during the pandemic and also the post pandemic. So thank you very much, uh, our honorable speakers from different countries. So that is from my side. Uh, now I'd like to give the special thanks to our honorable speakers, our uh, delighted moderator, our organizer and our lovely participant from uh, home and abroad. Uh, now time to say uh, goodbye. Uh, I think, uh, hope to see you again, uh, like uh, in uh, like that, uh, that type of session or seminar. So stay safe and stay fine. Have a nice time. Bye bye. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable insight. So uh, we hope that our participant here and also the speaker uh, will came to know some approaches that Bangladesh government taken and uh, thinking in near future. So thank you all. Good night. And thank you, sir, for your valuable time. So good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.